Have you ever wondered why cancer, a disease that was once rare, has become so prevalent in today's society? It's a question that's likely crossed your mind more than once. In this video we'll delve into the complex world of cancer, a disease that touches the lives of millions each year. We'll explore its causes from genetics to environmental factors and lifestyle choices. But we'll also look at the brighter side, prevention. Join us as we delve into the causes of this dreaded disease and explore ways to prevent it. First, we need to understand what cancer is. Essentially, cancer is not just one disease but a group of diseases. All types of cancer have one common trait, the uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. It's like a city where the traffic lights have gone haywire causing chaos and disruption. You see normally our cells have a systematic way of growing and dividing to form new cells. But when this process goes awry, that's when cancer develops. Instead of dying these old cells become immortal, forming a mass we commonly refer to as a tumor. Cancer is a chameleon. It comes in many forms and types. It can start anywhere in the body, from the skin to the lungs, to the colon, or even the breast. Each type has its unique characteristics and requires a different approach for treatment. Now that we grasp what cancer is, let's move on to its causes. One of the major causes of cancer is genetics. Unraveling this statement we find that our genetic makeup, the DNA that codes for everything we are, can sometimes be the root of cancer development. It's a complex interplay of genetic mutations, some of which we inherit and others we acquire over our lifetime. Let's break it down. Each cell in our body has a set of instructions, our genes, that control how cells grow and divide. Sometimes these instructions get a little mixed up, resulting in mutations. These genetic mutations can lead to cells growing out of control, and voila, we have a cancerous tumor. Now you might ask, where do these mutations come from? Well, some people inherit mutations from their parents, we call these hereditary mutations. They are present in every cell of the body from the moment of conception. But don't panic, even if you have an inherited mutation it doesn't mean you'll definitely get cancer, it just means you have a higher risk. The other type of mutations are those that we acquire over our lifetime. These are called somatic mutations. They can result from exposure to harmful substances like tobacco smoke or ultraviolet rays, or they can just be a product of aging. Within the realm of genetics we encounter two key players, oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. Oncogenes are like the gas pedal of a car. When mutated they can cause cells to divide and grow excessively. On the other hand, tumor suppressor genes act like the brake pedal. When these genes are mutated they can fail to stop cell growth, again leading to cancer. So it's a delicate balance, isn't it? Our cells are constantly walking the tightrope between normal growth and cancerous growth. And sometimes genetics can tip the scales in the wrong direction. But remember, while genetics plays a crucial role, it's not the only cause of cancer. There's a whole world of factors out there that can contribute to this disease, and it's exploring these factors that can help us understand, prevent, and ultimately conquer cancer. Genetics plays a big role but it's not the only cause of cancer. Our environment also plays a significant role in causing cancer. The world around us is not just trees, rivers, and mountains, it's also a minefield of potential carcinogens, substances that can cause alterations in our cells, leading to cancer. Let's consider tobacco smoke, a notorious offender in this regard. The smoke from tobacco is a cocktail of about 7,000 chemicals. Many of these, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and nitrosamines and aromatic amines are carcinogens. When we inhale tobacco smoke, these chemicals enter our lungs and can damage the DNA in our cells, increasing the risk of lung cancer. Radiation is another environmental factor that can cause cancer. This isn't just about nuclear disasters or radiation therapy. It's about everyday exposure from the sun's ultraviolet rays, or from radon gas seeping into homes from the soil. These types of radiation can damage our cells' DNA, increasing our risk of skin cancer and lung cancer respectively. Then there are certain chemicals, often found in workplaces, that can lead to cancer. For example, asbestos, used in construction materials, can cause lung cancer and mesothelioma, a rare form of cancer affecting the thin tissue lining of the body's internal organs. Similarly, benzene used in rubber, dyes, detergents, drugs, and pesticides is linked to leukemia and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. But amidst this gloomy picture, there's a ray of hope. We can control our exposure to these environmental factors. We can avoid smoking and secondhand smoke. We can protect ourselves from the sun's harmful rays and test our homes for radon. 
We can be mindful of our workplace safety, ensuring we're not exposed to harmful chemicals. In essence, while our environment can indeed be a minefield of potential carcinogens, it's also a landscape of prevention and control. We can't alter our genes, but we can certainly modify our interactions with the environment. While we can't control our genetics, we can control our exposure to these environmental factors. Our lifestyle choices can significantly influence our risk of developing cancer. And this isn't just a catchy phrase, it's a scientifically proven fact. Let's start with diet. Eating a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, lean proteins and whole grains can greatly reduce your risk of developing certain types of cancer. On the other hand, a diet high in processed foods, red meat and sugar can increase your risk. It's important to remember that no single food or food group can protect you completely. It's about the overall pattern of your diet. Next, let's talk about physical activity. Regular exercise is not just good for your heart, it's also a powerful cancer deterrent. It's recommended that adults engage in at least 30 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity five days a week. This can be as simple as brisk walking, cycling or even dancing. The key is to find something you enjoy and stick with it. Then, there's alcohol consumption. While an occasional glass of wine or beer isn't likely to significantly increase your cancer risk, regular and heavy drinking can. Alcohol can cause damage to body tissues and increase levels of certain hormones linked to cancer. If you choose to drink, moderation is key. Now let's touch on the relationship between obesity and cancer. Research has shown that being overweight or obese can increase your risk of developing many types of cancer. This is because excess body fat can lead to changes in the body that promote cancer growth, such as inflammation and high levels of certain hormones. It's crucial to remember that these lifestyle choices are within our control. We can choose to eat a healthy diet, to exercise regularly, to limit alcohol consumption, and to maintain a healthy weight. And while these choices alone can't guarantee cancer prevention, they can go a long way in reducing our overall risk. Making healthier lifestyle choices can significantly reduce our risk of developing cancer. And remember, it's never too late to start making healthier choices. Prevention is always better than cure, especially when it comes to cancer. Understanding how to take proactive measures against cancer can be a game changer. One of the most effective ways to prevent cancer is through regular screenings. Early detection of precancerous conditions or early stage cancers dramatically increases the chances of successful treatment. So, schedule routine checkups with your healthcare provider and stay on top of any recommended screenings. Next, let's talk about diet. A healthy diet can be a powerful tool in the fight against cancer. Opt for a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. These foods are packed with antioxidants and other nutrients that help protect your cells from damage. Limit the intake of processed foods and red meats that are often high in unhealthy fats and additives. Exercise is another key component of cancer prevention. Regular physical activity helps maintain a healthy weight, which reduces the risk of several types of cancer. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate to intense activity each day. Whether it's a brisk walk, a yoga session, or a bike ride, find something you enjoy and make it a part of your daily routine. Tobacco and alcohol are two of the most significant risk factors for many types of cancer. If you're a smoker, quitting is the best thing you can do for your health. It's never too late to quit, and the benefits start the moment you put out that last cigarette. Similarly, if you choose to drink alcohol, do so in moderation. Heavy drinking can lead to a variety of cancers, including those of the mouth, throat, and liver. In conclusion, embracing a healthy lifestyle can significantly reduce your risk of cancer. It's about making small, consistent changes to your everyday habits. It can be as simple as swapping out your afternoon soda for a glass of water, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, or making time for a quick workout during your lunch break. Preventing cancer might seem daunting, but it's definitely worth the effort. We've learned a lot about cancer today, but knowledge is only powerful if we use it. It's like owning a sports car but never taking it for a spin. The horsepower under the hood remains unutilized and the thrill of the drive unexperienced. So let's put the pedal to the metal and use what we've learned about cancer to drive our health in the right direction. We've discussed the causes of cancer genetics, environmental factors, and lifestyle choices. We've also explored various ways to prevent it. Now the ball is in your court. It's time to take that knowledge and apply it to your life. Regular doctor's visits should be as routine as your morning cup of coffee or tea. They are an opportunity for you to discuss any health concerns and undergo necessary screenings. These screenings can detect cancer in its early stages, 
when it is most treatable. Don't wait for symptoms to appear. Be proactive in your healthcare. Think of these doctor's visits as pit stops in your health journey. They allow you to refuel, check the condition of your vehicle, your body, and make necessary adjustments to keep you running smoothly. Remember, it's easier to prevent damage than to repair it. We've also talked about lifestyle choices. Adopting a healthier lifestyle is like switching to a more efficient fuel. It enhances your performance and reduces the risk of breakdowns. Incorporate regular exercise, a balanced diet, and adequate sleep into your routine. Avoid smoking and limit your alcohol intake. These simple changes can make a significant difference in reducing your cancer risk. Let's not forget about the role of genetics. If your family has a history of cancer, it's crucial to share this information with your doctor. They can guide you on the appropriate screenings and preventive measures. You've got the keys to the car now. It's up to you to steer your health in the right direction. Remember, the journey to a healthier life doesn't have to be a solo ride. Share your knowledge about cancer prevention with your loved ones. Encourage them to join you in making healthier choices. Together you can create a convoy of health, driving towards a future free of cancer. Remember, your health is in your hands. Start taking steps towards cancer prevention today. Stay informed, stay healthy. It's time to rev up your engines, hit the road and drive towards a healthier and cancer-free life.